Welcome to IVF This, episode 59, The Thought Letter. Welcome to IVF This. I'm your host, Emily Ginn. I'm a mother to two beautiful and feral boys. I'm married to my favorite person in the world. I'm a social worker, a life coach, and an IVF warrior. I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and emotions during your IVF journey, to break free from anxiety and regain control of your life, even in the midst of infertility. I'm going to teach you to say IVF this to how we think about, talk about, and experience infertility. Let's go. Hello, 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 my beautiful friends. I hope you're doing so well today. I'm doing well myself. I think like all of us, I'm just trying to stay safe and healthy during this latest Omicron surge. So I hope you are all staying safe and healthy right now. Before I get into the thought ladder and what it is and share all about that, I wanted to share with you some listener love, which I haven't done in a while. So I've actually got two to share today. The first one is titled, You Are Not Alone. Infertility is hard and lonely. It's nice to know that the thoughts and feelings you've had about IVF and infertility are likely shared by many others. Emily helps validate your experience and gives you practical strategies to stop it from overtaking your life. And that comes from user... NKH94. And I'm so glad that this podcast helps you feel less alone because you're absolutely right. The experience of hopelessness, of uh, worthlessness, of despair, of longing, of isolation is not exclusive to any one person. Those are universal experiences, they're universal emotions that all of us share. For us, it happens to be within the context of infertility and IVF. So I'm so glad that even just a a morsel of the podcast was able to help you feel more connected. All right. And the second one is hooked. I'm already hooked on the title. So sorry, I couldn't help it. Y'all, I'm only on the first episode and I'm tearing up because she gets me. I'm starting IVF next month and this is exactly what I needed for the three weeks leading up to the start. So thankful for this podcast. That comes from user AMH7U, which just judging by the y'all, I'm going to guess that you're a Southern girl like me um, because I can't help but pepper y'all in with everything. So you are so welcome. I wish you all the luck in the world on your upcoming cycle. So I hope that goes well. And if you need anything, please reach out. You guys have um, my email is hello at IVFthiscoaching.com. And you can also, my DMs are open on Instagram. So if you ever need anything, just like a quick support, or you wanted to touch base, just reach out. And I just want to say thank you. Just thank you for taking the time to share the podcast, for taking a second to rate and review it. I can't tell you how much that means to me. I've gotten a couple more that I'll share next week too. But I will say this, when you take time to rate and review a podcast, and this is pretty specific to Apple Podcasts, but taking the time to do that helps the podcast become more discoverable. Meaning, The more engagement we get from it, similar to social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok, the more Apple will recommend it. Now, I know that Spotify and Google Podcasts don't have that option, but if that's your preferred podcast platform, another option might be for you to share it on your social media if you want. Take a screenshot and share it in your stories. Don't forget to tag me at IVF This Coaching. And if you're part of any infertility or IVF community on Facebook, you can suggest it in there. I always feel like We're our own IVF This community, and we're just about spreading the word that there is a possibility of feeling differently during this process. So I really appreciate any and all help you have in spreading that message. All right, let's talk about thought ladders. I feel like I've alluded to this a little bit in some of my previous podcasts, but whenever I'm working with someone, anyone, mini sessions, coaching clients, especially at the beginning of working together. We will go through one of those think, feel, do cycles, which is, I would say, the foundational tool of my coaching. We'll go through a think, feel, do cycle, and they can see how their thoughts are creating their feelings and what they're, quote unquote, doing based on that feeling. Inevitably, I could set my watch by it. The next question is always, okay, how do I change that? Now, if you've listened to me for any length of time, 
you know that automatically changing your thoughts is not really the name of my game. Mostly because it doesn't work like that. Not because I I don't want you to think differently, but because it just doesn't work like that. Most of our unconscious thought patterns are so deeply ingrained in our subconscious that one, we don't really pay attention to them. We're not really aware of them. And two, when you are able to identify them, trying to switch them to a better thought doesn't really create lasting, sustainable change. Intellectually knowing that your thoughts create your feelings and truly understanding it and simultaneously questioning those unconscious belief patterns, very different things, which is not a problem, right? I'm not here to tell you you're doing anything wrong. That just takes conscious practice. Since none of us are taught about our feelings, except that other people are responsible for them and that you don't really have control over them, which is complete BS, you're essentially having to unlearn a lifetime of social programming. And that shit takes time. And then the idea of, okay, I'll switch my thought to something better. This is kind of like my love-hate relationship with mantras and affirmations or phrases like just think positively. Mantras and affirmations are perfectly fine. They look so inspirational on Pinterest, and they're usually paired with a beautiful image for a perfectly coiffed Instagram grid. But for most of us, the affirmations or mantras are a bit too far-fetched for us to believe. It's a bridge too far. Let me give you an example. If I have always told myself that I'm a piece of crap that cannot do anything right, If I live in this perfectionistic fantasy of unless it is perfect, it is not worth doing or I am not worthy, then a mantra or affirmation of I am strong, smart, and capable is literally just me reciting words. I don't believe it. It might settle on me for a few minutes, hours, or days, but my brain will always go back to thinking how it is always thought. So the recurring belief of me being a piece of crap will always be more believable. And that's what we're really talking about, believability. Not that the thought is true or not. That's almost irrelevant. I don't really care if you have all the evidence in the world to factually prove a thought out. I don't care. I care how that thought makes you feel. When it comes to our brain's opinions, which is all that is outside of data that is agreed upon by the collective world to be true, like two plus two equals four, Everything you think about yourself, your life, your job, other people is an opinion. When you're just repeating something that you don't believe, you're not going to get an emotional response. So if your thoughts create your feelings and your feelings drive our actions without the emotional response, you will not take action based on that feeling because no feeling exists. Now, that doesn't mean that mantras should never be used or affirmations are terrible. Stick with me for a few more minutes and I'm going to show you how you can use them, but a bit more constructively. It's just that the really crappy thoughts, the really crappy opinions that we have tend to be louder or more consistent in our brain, which is why what I call thought swapping, swapping a a, quote unquote, bad thought for a quote unquote, better thought doesn't work in the long run. In fact, sometimes it actually feels worse because when it doesn't work, then you layer on shame and guilt of not doing it right because it's not working. And then you've just piled more craptastic thoughts on top of craptastic thoughts. So the thought ladder is a tool that we use to accomplish what is essentially the main practice of thought work, which is going from thinking one thing to thinking something else. I believe that there are really two main things of thought work, like the two main pillars. One is having feelings and processing emotions, and the other is changing your thoughts. We use the thought ladder when we have an aspirational or a goal thought, and we want to work up to it. So an aspirational thought might be anything you want to think on purpose. This could be where you use mantras or affirmations. The thought ladder is a tool for helping you develop neutral or baby step thoughts So in this episode, I call them ladder thoughts. But if you've heard other people talk about neutral thoughts or baby step thoughts before, it's all the same. It's all semantics. It's just a new thought you want to practice believing, even though it's not the ultimate aspirational thought that you want to have forever. So a neutral thought, they're not the be all end all. They're not necessarily what you want to believe forever. They're a thought on the way to that forever aspirational thought. 
So let me explain how this works. So I love to make this a writing exercise so that you can see it in real time. You're just going to take a plain piece of paper and you're going to draw a ladder on it. It does not have to be fancy. No one is handing out art awards here. At the bottom of the ladder, you're going to put your current thought. Now I noticed I said singular thought, one thought per ladder rung. Current thought goes at the bottom of the ladder. And at the top of the ladder, you put your goal thought, your aspirational thought. The aspirational thought is the thought you would love to believe. You just don't believe it yet. That is why it goes to the top as the goal or aspirational thought. Now, some of your brains might be like, I don't know what my goal thought is. It's too hard. I don't want to choose the wrong thing. Newsflash, my loves. There's no right or wrong. This is not something to burn the midnight oil on, okay? If you're not sure what you would want to believe as your goal thought, you can ask yourself one thing. What is the opposite of your current thought? So if your current thought is, I will never be a mother, then the aspirational thought is maybe, I will be a mother someday. Outside of the world of motherhood or infertility, because this can be used for anything, you can imagine someone who is sort of the kind of person that you want to be. They have the feeling you want to have, or they have the result that you want to have. They have the belief that you want. They have the thing in their life that you want. Whatever it is, what would they be thinking? Now, just an aside, your brain might not be ready to come up with a truly positive aspirational thought yet, but it will get there. No right or wrong. Honestly, your goal thought doesn't matter that much because you're just trying to give yourself some vague idea of what could be different. Okay. Again, this is not something to really spin out about. This is as easy as it sounds. I promise you. Now, also remember you're not supposed to believe the aspirational thought. I know I said that, but I'm going to say it again. When you think your goal thought, you will not feel better. It will look like words on a page. If you feel better when you think it, bravo, then you have accidentally discovered a thought that you can already believe and you can stop doing the ladder and just practice that. But if you're doing a thought ladder, usually the reason is you can't believe the aspirational thought. So it's not supposed to feel good. It should probably feel like nothing. Like, sure, it would be nice to have, but I don't. That's what a goal thought is. It's a thought where if I suggested it to you, you would say to me, yeah, sure, that'd be nice to believe, but I don't. But my brain has all these objections, but I don't feel anything. So you take your goal thought, your aspirational thought, whatever it is, write it at the top of the ladder. So now what you have to do is figure out what thoughts are going to take us from the bottom, our current thought, up to the aspirational thought at the top of the ladder. And to do that, we need to brainstorm neutral thoughts. Ladder thoughts, the ones in the middle, right, are not usually super inspirational. They're not sexy. They will not be featured on Instagram accounts or on photos of people doing yoga on the beach. They will not be engraved on jewelry at Etsy. They don't make good quotes. They're not super inspirational. They likely will not make you feel warm and squishy inside. They are small steps, but they're thoughts that you can believe. Now, I teach my clients several different ways to do this, but for the sake of this podcast, not being an hour long, I'll just give you the highlights. Usually to get the ball rolling on the in-between the ladder thoughts, right? Because we're visualizing going up a ladder, the rungs on the ladder. You may want to try to use an opener or an opening phrase like I am open to believing or I am learning to believe. Now, if you're trying to work up the ladder to the aspirational thought of I will be a mother, then one of the rungs of the ladder might be I am open to believing it is a possibility for me to become a mother one day. Like, put in all the qualifiers. It's totally fine. I'm learning to believe that it is possible that one day I will be a mother. Grammar be damned, this is just about opening up your mind to possibilities. It's essentially like, here's the goal thought, and then we put in front of it, I'm open to believing, I'm learning to believe, I'm becoming a person who believes. We attach an opener to the goal thought, to the aspirational thought. We can also attach an opener to the current thought. Like, it's possible that my brain is not reliable 
when it tells me I'm never going to be a mom. So that's kind of an opener you can attach to the goal thought or to the current thought. You can also try what I call depersonalizing the thoughts. Our thoughts are most painful when they're about us. So if you have the thought that you're never going to be a mom because of a diagnosis or maybe you've had failed fertility treatments in the past, but you might be able to believe a thought like there are women with my diagnoses or who have had failed fertility treatments in the past that have become mothers. You're making the thought about other people who share something with you. They have something in common with you, but it's more distant than making it about yourself. So your brain won't come up with as many objections. So those are the tools that I like to use. A couple of examples, but there's no right or wrong way to come up with a thought letter, truly. It just needs to be slightly better than the current thought that you have. And I really encourage you to brainstorm several anytime you do a thought letter. There isn't a right answer. I'm going to say that another 50 times, and I hope you understand there is no right or wrong. Come up with a few and read each one and see which one feels best to you. And so important, you have to remember that your best may just be feeling like nothing like feeling neutral, or it might even be feeling like bad, but not quite as bad. Like, especially with anxiety, something like a neutral thought, sometimes that thought will just give you like, oh, my anxiety went from an eight to a four on a scale of one to 10. That's still good. A four is a hell of a lot better than an eight. That's the whole point of the thought ladder. It doesn't do any good to be like wishing and looking for a thought that will magically solve all of your feelings when you are not ready for that. It is much better to practice a thought that improves things a little bit over time. It will get better and better. So just going for a feeling a little bit better, even just a slight lessening of feeling bad because it's not supposed to feel amazing. Once you pick a thought, then you need to practice it. You can set an alarm on your phone. You don't have to get fancy about this. Set an alarm on your phone, put sticky notes around your house. That's usually how I do it. Anything you can do to remind yourself to think that thought, whatever thought you're practicing on whatever rung of the ladder you're on, you need to practice, practice, practice. The biggest question I get about thought ladders usually is how do I know when I'm ready to go to the next rung on the ladder? or to start practicing the aspirational thought, if that's where you are. There's no right or wrong to this, again, but I think kind of once you're thinking that new thought, the latter thought that you chose, once you're sort of thinking that naturally, like you don't have to practice it at all, it just comes up on its own, then you can move to the next rung on the ladder. Or again, you might be ready for that aspirational thought. One of the things I find interesting about latter thoughts is that I usually... Let's say I brainstorm five different rungs on the ladder. Then I don't usually have to go through them all. Usually if I practice one until it's natural or maybe even two, my brain is kind of like, oh, I can make the jump the rest of the way on my own. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it does not. Sometimes I do have to go through many iterations. But it's so interesting that this is a little bit more advanced work is that sometimes you'll get to your goal thought and be like, oh, I now can see an even better thought than this. So now what was my goal thought now becomes my current thought. And I want to set a new goal thought all in the same issue. Is a perfectly malleable, flexible process that you can create to your own liking. So as you're evolving as a person, as you're learning more and more about thought work, you can start whole new ladders. But I will always encourage you to check in with yourself when you're practicing thinking the goal thought to see how you feel. Your body is always going to be your guide. So you always just want to check in with your body. Like, okay, that is the thought ladder. It's a super effective tool for incremental thought work change, which is really amazing. It's not an overnight revolution. It's not. It's not transformation immediately. I don't really believe that stuff exists. It really is a little bit of a daily grind sometimes. 
especially in the beginning. And that's okay. Your brain is kind of grinding away anyway, making you feel like crap. It's like when my, it's like when my clients say thought work is so hard. I'm like, well, sometimes, but thinking shitty things about yourself, your whole life is also hard. So you might as well choose the hard, then put effort into something that's going to make you feel better. And that's what I want for you. All of you, my beautiful friends. So that's the thought letter. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or if you're wanting to create a thought ladder of your own and you have questions, schedule a mini session with me. We can work together to build one. The mini sessions are completely complimentary. You can go to my website, www.ivfthiscoaching.com to schedule, or you can go to my bio and my social medias on Instagram and Facebook at IVF This Coaching and book a mini session. Either way, I'm right there. Okay, my friends, that is what I have for you, my lovely ladies. I hope you have a beautiful week and I will talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of IVF This. If you like what you've heard, click subscribe and follow to make sure you don't miss an episode. And if you want to learn more, head over to www.ivfthiscoaching.com to learn how to work together.